Hey, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. Happy holidays. Happy and merry no matter what you're celebrating. Hope you're all getting ready for a wonderful holidays or have already had a wonderful holiday. So today I'm going to focus on marathon training again. We're going to continue with the marathon series. I'm going to give you my second option for a sub-330 marathon. I put one out a couple of years ago, actually. This one's a little bit more advanced, a little bit more particular and specific. So I would encourage you to take a look at one or the other. You might have a preference as a coach or an athlete, or you may uh, want to know how to progress from one to the next as well, which is another reason why I'm given two options. So you can learn how to incorporate certain things that weren't incorporated last time. And again, I'm going to go live a couple days after this. So that if you have any questions about the sub 330, we can talk about it. We, we already did the sub four hours and we went live after the sub four hours. I'm going to do sub three hours and go live afterward. And then I'm going to do sub 230 and go live afterward as well. So I want you to have direct access to me. So if you have questions, especially ones on the fly, and sometimes questions lead to more questions, I'm happy to answer all of them. So if you're not subscribed to this channel, you're an athlete or a coach, hit that sub button, please. I thank you so much for that. Hit the notification button too. That way you're always in front of the line when content comes in, when new stuff comes in. So I thank you so much for that. Now, we're going to talk about sub-330 marathon plan, <clears throat> okay? Now we're going to incorporate VO2 max and speed farlet workouts. Using a similar principles as the initial videos, periodization, basically four-week blocks, we're going to do 16 weeks. I'm going to give you every week broken down, okay? And you'll have slides here as well. And again, if you have questions and you don't want to wait to the, the live stream, blackbeltrunningcoach at gmail.com is my email address. Feel free to email me. If you have questions, I'm happy to answer them, no matter what they are. Okay. Now, here's some equivalent paces. The marathon pace itself, you're looking at 757, 78, 758 per mile. Okay, that gives you a little bit of cushion to play with. Right around 329, a little bit faster. Than that. Half marathon equivalent, 740 to 741 per mile. 10K equivalent, 718 to 719 per mile. You're looking at anywhere from 15 to 20 seconds differential between. Paces. So half marathon 740, 41, 10K, 718, 719, 5K pace 702 to 703. Speed farlic is essentially incorporating 5K pace and 3K pace, which acts as a form of speed development for the marathons, 704 to 648 per mile. Right? You go from 5K pace to 3K pace and a progression run. I like to use 90 second blocks, <clears throat> okay? Progressing from 75 seconds slower than marathon pace, which is set 915 per mile, and working towards 15 seconds faster. Per mile, which is 745 per mile. So it's a nice 90 second progression over the course of a run, whether it be a regular run, whether it be a long run, it's completely up to you to decide. Okay. And again, here's some little things. W -E -W -E, when I say W in any of my, my slides or videos, it means warm up. CD is cool down. Whenever I say D and S, drills and strides. I've removed them from the slides that I have here just to preserve some space because it's hard to incorporate that and the workout and still stay within the slide. I want you to know what they are. Any warm up and cool down, essentially, when it comes to marathon training, you're looking at probably two to three miles each on both ends. Probably two is a sweet spot. But again, this depends on where you're at as a coach, where you're at as an athlete, what you prefer for your athletes or yourself. So it's your discretion. But essentially, there, standard warm ups and cool downs are usually two to three miles. It's a great way of adding volume, too, if you want to do that. Now, week one and two. Okay, and I'll, I'm going to point this out. Mondays are always going to be a consistent, easy day. Six miles easy on Mondays. It's a good way to start out the week, especially if you're either in school or you're you're working, you have a family and stuff. Easing yourself into the week is a good idea. And I generally hold a Tuesday, Friday workout format for the most part, with a couple of exceptions you'll see in this in this video too. So six miles easy Monday. Tuesday, you do your warm up, your drills and strides, your 20 minute tempo at half marathon pace. You can always go back and refer to what the half marathon pace is. And if you're training for the marathon at this point, if you're looking to break 330, you probably have a little bit of a running background. If not, if you're trying to do this from scratch, I've got basically couch to marathon training programs or marathon training programs for beginners. I would encourage you to take a look at take a look out of that video and see how it differs from this one. Okay, so 20 minute tempo at half marathon pace. And then you're cooled in. You can even do a couple of strides afterward as well. Wednesday, nine miles. Five, five by 100 meters, stride after the miles. Thursday, seven miles easy. Friday, you do your warm up, your drills and strides, eight times 100 meter uphill runs with a jog easy down recovery. Attacking the hill, lifting up your knees. You're trying to maintain the same cadence as you would running fast on the flats. Obviously, it'll be slower, but if you can maintain the rhythm, 
but you're in a good position to recover well up the hill and over the hill. So eight times 100 uphill, jog down recovery. And the hills up, hills act the speed development and leg power as well. So you, you're getting double benefit here. The long run is 10 miles on Saturday, <clears throat> four miles easy on Sunday, okay? In this particular program, I have days off every other weekend, every other Sunday, okay? You could, if you want, infuse a cross-training day. I have it in my sub-four-hour training program. You could easily do that. And if you do, I would encourage you to do it on a Thursday. That way it's uh, not the day after a workout. You're recovering the day after a workout to flush the legs out. So, And then you have a cross-trained day, which kind of is a low-impact day leading into the Friday workout. So something to think about. Week two, six miles easy on Monday. Tuesday, five times a kilometer at threshold. So three miles worth of threshold running. The 20-minute tempo, you're looking at about, about three miles or almost three miles worth of uh, tempo running. So I want to continue to similar volume with the threshold running. So here it's five times a kilometer at threshold with a minute recovery after each rep. Threshold is essentially about seven to eight to 10 seconds faster per mile than tempo run pace. So if the tempo run here is at 7.45, 7.46, then the threshold stuff is at about 7.35 to 7.36. You can run it a little bit faster with the short recoveries. But the volume is consistent, should be consistent with the tempo running itself. Wednesday, 9 miles, 7 by 50 meter strides. Thursday, 7 miles easy. And then Friday, warm up, drills and strides. 8 times a 200 meter on a flat with a 200 jog at 5K pace. Okay, a little bit of speed development to complement the uphills that were last week. So now we're getting some flat and fast running versus the, uh, the uphill and fast running. Okay, both act as forms of speed development for the marathon. Long runs 12 miles on Saturday, and then you have an off day on Sunday. So that's weeks one and two. Let's move to weeks three and four. Again, you'll see the consistent six miles easy on Monday. That's going to remain the same for the whole entire program. Okay, now you're adding five minutes to tempo. Warm up, drills and strides, 25 minute tempo. And you can even do, I encourage folks to do two by a 200 on the track of the road with a 200 meter jog recovery at the pace you're going to run the tempo. This helps you identify the pace and lock into it at the start of a workout rather than having to use a chunk of your workout to find the pace. So two times 200 is always a good idea to do that, no matter what the pace is of the workout itself. Okay. And then on the back end, after your 25-minute tempo, you could do some strides if you want, or you just do a cool down. Wednesday, nine miles, six times 100. Strides, speed development. Thursday, seven miles easy. You'll see a consistent pattern here of Wednesday, Tuesday, uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays and two, having two easy days between the workouts. So on, obviously, those are non-race weeks. Race weeks, you kind of tinker it a little bit differently. Um, and then seven miles easy Thursday. Now we're, we're bumping up from 8 times 100 uphill. Now we're bumping up to 8 times 200 on the uphill with a jog, easy recovery, the same effort. Okay, make sure you're perpendicular coming back down from the hill, meaning you don't want to lean back too much and then use your use your legs breaking breaking mechanisms. That puts a lot of stress on your Achilles, your lower back, your knees. If you can lean into the hill and be perpendicular, it'll allow you to have a little bit better rhythm as you go down the hill. You may run a little bit faster, but that's okay. It'll be more forgiving your legs too. 14 mile long run on Saturday, and obviously you're doing cool down after the uphill runs. 14 mile long run on Saturday, four miles easy Sunday. And let me point out something about the long run as well. If you're running a flat marathon, which I would encourage you to check out the course map and see what it looks like, then the majority of your long runs and harder workouts should, or marathon type based workouts should be on the flats. If your marathon is a rolling hill race, I would encourage you to do a lot of your long runs and some of your workouts on rolling hill pace too to get used to the fluctuation in pace, the different dynamic on the legs as you're going up, as you're going down. It's a little bit of a different um, rhythm and dynamic, so you definitely want to be prepared for that. Week four, same six miles easy on Monday. Tuesday, we're going from five times a K at threshold now to five times 1,200 at threshold with a 115 recovery after each rep. The same pace, but you're spending more time in the threshold zone now. That's a sign of improvement. Nine miles on Wednesday, five by 50 meter strides. Seven miles easier cross train and bike on Thursday. Friday, we're bumping up from eight by 200 with a 200 yard recovery. Now it's going to be eight by 300 on the flats with a one minute recovery at 5K pace. That's the same pace, spending more time at that pace. 
So this is a way of showing, you know, we're still building right now. We're early in the marathon training cycle. So we're building volume. And then you can start transitioning over a certain areas later on. 12 miles, 12 miles long run on Saturday, off day on Sunday. That's week four. Now, let's get to week five and six. Same six miles easy Monday. Week five, Tuesday, warm up drills and strides, 30 minute tempo at half marathon pace. Then I'm going from 20 to 25, now to 30. Okay, then a cool down on the back end. 10 miles on Wednesday. So now we're going up to the, the semi long run, the 10 miles. And if you can get to the point where you're doing two double digit runs per week, that's a good thing. Your semi long run and your long run. It's a good way of simulating being on your feet for an extended period of time, which is an important part of marathon training too. So 10 miles, five by hundred meter strides. Thursday, seven easy. Friday, warm up drills and strides, eight times a 300 uphill. Now with a jog easy recovery, went from eight, eight by hundred to eight times 200. Now eight times 300. So we're gradually building on the uphills. Cool down. 14 mile long run on Saturday, four miles easy on Sunday. Week six, six easy on Monday. Increase in the volume of the thresholds. Now we're going to five to five times 1600 at threshold with a 130 recovery. At the same pace you're in the thousands and the 1200s, we're spending more time in the threshold zone. Okay. And then Wednesdays, 10 miles, five by 50 strides. Thursday, seven easy. And again, use the Thursday to cross train if you need to. Instead of running. Friday, eight times a 400 on the flat. Now with a 200 jog at 5K pace. That's after your warm up. Drills and strides, that's before your cool down. So we've gone from 8 by 200s on the flat to 8 by 300s. Now about 8 times 400 on the flat. So we're building volume at a certain pace right now before we transition into something else. 16 miles long run on Saturday. Off day is Sunday. Okay. Notice the consistent patterns of Tuesday and Friday. Okay. Infusing speed development over time. Okay. And the long run's gradually getting longer. Next up, week 7 and 8. Six miles easy on Monday. Now we're going to do a little bit of speed far like in VO2 max, like I mentioned. The next phase here. So warm up drills and strides on Tuesday. Eight by eight by 800 meters with a three minute recovery at VO2 max. So if you're looking to run 330 for the marathon, you're looking to run these 800 meter reps in 330. Okay, that's seven minute pace. About a minute faster per mile than marathon pace. Okay, so eight times an 800 with a three minute recovery at VO2 max. Wednesday, 10 miles, five by 100 meter stride. Thursday, seven miles, get a relatively brisk pace, or if you need to bike or cross train, you do that. Friday, five miles and a five by 150 meters. And Saturday's an 18 mile long run. Okay, you can even use it as a progression, get gradually faster throughout the way if you want. Four miles easy on Saturday. The key workout was the VO2 max reps on Tuesday, and I, I figured it's going to take a couple extra days to get to recover from that, which is why I didn't put a Friday workout. We added some speed development on the other end. Week eight, six miles easy Monday. Tuesday, speed fartlek after you warm up. Do 20 times one minute hard versus one minute easy. The one minute hard is between 5K pace. Progress down to 3K pace. The one minute easy, try it at marathon pace if you can. Marathon pace, okay? And then you have your cool down in the back. So it's 20 minutes of total hard running. <clears throat> 10 miles relax on Wednesday. Thursday, seven miles, seven by 100 meter stride. Friday, five miles easy. Saturday goes your 16 mile long run progression. Okay, we dropped it two miles, but we made it progressively faster. Dropped, I don't think, and again, if you go from 9.15 to 7.45, that's a nice progression long run right there. Sunday's an off day. Week nine and 10, six easy on Monday. <clears throat> Tuesday, warm up drills and strides, six times at 1200 with a four minute recovery at VO2 max. So, same pace you're in the 800s, VO2 max. All right? Wednesday, and then you have your cool down, obviously. Wednesday, 10 miles at 5 by 100 meter strides. Thursday, 7 miles at a brisk pace. Friday, 5 miles, 5 by 50 meter strides. Okay? And then Saturday, 20 mile long run. That's the, now the other key run of the week, a 20 mile long run. If you can get to the point where you can do 20 or plus a couple times, You'll be in better shape for the marathon itself. And four miles easy Sunday. <clears throat> Week 10, six easy Monday. Tuesday, another speed far leg, warm up, drills, and strides. Now we're going 20 times one minute 30 hard and one minute 30 easy. Okay, it's by time effort. 
And if you can lock into the pace you need to lock into, then you're great. But you also, we also want you to get a feel for running hard without having to rely on a track and splits and all this other stuff. You want to get a feel for your body. So this is a great way to do it. Speed fart like Tuesday. And then you cool down. 10 miles relaxed on Wednesday. 7 miles on Thursday with 7 by 100 meter stride. Friday, 5 miles easy. Nice and recovery. 18 mile long run progression on Saturday. 18 long run progression on Saturday. It's going to be a good one. Off day on Sunday. Now, week 11 and 12, six miles easy, Monday, five times a mile or five times 1,600 with a five-minute recovery of VO2 max. So right now you're looking at probably between seven and 710 per mile uh, for, for five of them with a five-minute recovery. Wednesday, 10 miles. Thursday, seven miles, five by 100 meters stride. Friday, five miles easy. Saturday, 13 miles long run easy. We're dropping the long run this week to get ready for some big, a big effort next week. Three miles easy on Sat on Sunday. Then week 12, this is a key week, six miles easy on Monday. Dropping the volume in the workout itself because the, effort, the hard effort is going to be when we test you on Saturday. It's five times a kilometer with a one-minute recovery at threshold pace. And that's it. Ten miles Wednesday, six miles on Thursday, five by 50 meter stride. Three miles easy on Friday. Saturday half mile half marathon race. You want to see where you're at in terms of half marathon. Are you kind of near the equivalent pacing times, which is about 15 to 17 seconds faster per mile for the half marathon? That'll give you a good idea how ready you are and how ready you need to be four weeks from now when the marathon happens. So it gives you an idea, it gives you some data on what to what to modify in the training. Okay, so it's a half marathon race, or you do a warm-up. You do a 15-mile marathon simulation pace run. So if you're looking to run 758 to 8 minutes, you're going to lock into that pace and you're going to try to run 15 miles of it at goal marathon pace, about four weeks out. And this is a good indicator of your fitness. And if you had a decent warm-up and cool down, you're again, you're over 20 miles. Okay? And then you're off on Sunday. Four weeks left, week 13 and 14. So week 13 here, six easy on Monday again, five by 50 minute strides. On then Tuesday, eight miles easy. You notice how we do Tuesday and Friday workouts. Well, you just had a, a simulation or a half marathon run, so I think it's a good idea to take an extra day of recovery sometimes too. In this case, we'll do an extra day of recovery. Speed fartlek, 16 times two minutes. Hard, two minutes easy. After the warm-up and before the cool-down. Seven miles on Thursday, five miles easy on Friday. Just letting your body recover. 20 miles with 10, the last 10 miles at marathon pace. Okay, you need to know what it feels like to run marathon pace at the end of the long run, not only just the beginning, not only the middle, but at the end of a long run too. Okay, and if you can maintain that at 20 miles and still feel like you can go, that's a good sign that you're ready for the marathon. Good sign. So 20 miles with the last 10 in marathon pace. And that's the emphasis now. This cycle here, the last cycle was what? VO2 max and speed far like and a couple of things. Now we're transitioning to long runs where the emphasis is with marathon pace towards the latter part of the long run. It's going to be the next long, bunch of long runs before the race itself. Okay, so four miles easy Sunday. Week 14, six miles easy on Monday. Five by one and a half miles or 1.5 miles with a three-minute recovery. You progress from marathon pace to half marathon pace. Should be doable. And then you cool down. Eight miles relax on Wednesday. Seven miles and five by 100 meter stride on Thursday. Four easy on Friday. 16 miles on Saturday. This is the... Cut back long run now. 16 miles with the last eight miles of it at marathon pace minus five seconds. So if you're looking at 758 to eight minutes last week, now you're looking at like seven, let's just say um, 750, 750 to 755, right around there. 750 to 755 per mile now. Gives you an idea of finishing a little bit faster towards the end as well. So if, you can, if you're holding marathon pace and you get there at 20 miles and you still feel good, that's a sign that you're pretty fit. So we want to know what it feels like to run a little bit faster than marathon pace towards the end of it too. So again, 16 miles with the last eight of it at marathon pace minus five seconds per mile. And then Sunday is the off day. Okay. Now we have two weeks left, gang. Okay. Two weeks left. And again, if you I hope you're, if you have questions, you're writing them down so you can send me, send me, I have the message on here or an email and I'm happy to answer them. And then lastly, weeks 15 and 16, scale back on volume a little bit, just like increasing either volume or intensity with periodization, it's important to do the same thing 
going back down when you're decreasing volume or intensity too. Okay, so nothing drastic, but it's six miles easy on Monday, five by 50 strides, six miles easy again on Tuesday. Okay, we cut back the semi-long run now. Since you had your simulation or your half marathon pace, we um, and your long, your long run too, with the last eight miles of it, and uh, marathon pace minus five seconds, it would be good to give you a couple extra easy days. So six miles easy Monday, five by 50 strides, six easy on Tuesday. Wednesday, warm up, drills and strides. Five times a mile with a two-minute recovery, you progress from marathon pace down to half marathon pace. Good marathon pace workout. Okay? Cool down. Cool down. Thursday, seven miles, five by 50 meter strides. Six, five miles easy on Friday. And then the last long run, 12 miles with the last six of it at marathon pace minus 10 seconds. So now, if you're looking at, again, 7.58 to eight minutes, now you're looking at... Um, 750 to like seven, you know, 748 per mile. So 10 minutes faster, 10 seconds faster per mile. And then a three mile easy on Sunday. And again, we cut back from 20 to 16 to 12. We cut back on the volume to make it a little bit more easier to also freshen up the legs for the race that's next week. Speaking of that, week 16, six miles easy Monday. You can do five times, warm up, drills and strides, five times in 800 with a two minute recovery and mile pace down to half marathon pace. Probably as good as you're going to get. Okay, and then you have your cool down as well. Warm up and cool down always. So five times in 800 with a two-minute recovery, a marathon pace to half marathon pace. Okay, good rhythm work leading into the race. Wednesday, six miles relaxed. Thursday, five miles, five by 50 meter strides. Friday is an off day. If the race is Sunday, Friday is an off day. If the race is Saturday, Thursday is the off day. Always two days out. So in this case, it's off day Friday, two miles easy on Saturday, and then the marathon, 26.2 miles is Sunday. So that right there is a sub-330 training program. Let me know what your thoughts are. Have you used other stuff? Do you have athletes or are you there yet? Have you, you know, gotten give me some in, give me some insights so that we can have a dialogue? And again, hop on the live stream. I mean, that'll be in a couple days so that we can talk about this. And if you have any questions at all. You are free to ask whatever you want. So thank you all for coming on, taking this time with me. I hope this was helpful. Hit the thumbs up if it was. And uh, happy, have a wonderful, wonderful holidays. Train smart, train smart, train hard, train hard. And I'll see you all next time.